Hello, my name is Mike Rayner, and this video is about how to install a hot swappable device. In this case, it will be a Finch robot into Ubuntu 12.04. So what is a hot swappable device? Uh, a hot swappable device is a device that can be plugged in and removed easily from a port such as USB port while the computer is running. Often for non-standard devices such as a Finch robot, only root users have access to the device. This would not work well for a classroom. This video will demonstrate how to configure Ubuntu so that all users have access to a hot swappable device. You'd be using the Finch robot as an example. So what's a Finch robot? Go to the Finch robot site. And here's an example of a Finch robot. And a Finch is designed to allow students to write richly interactive programs. It uses you can use Java, Python, Scratch. Uh, there's some several other languages that you may you can use to write programs for this Finch robot. So what are the features? Light, temperature, obstacle sensors, accelerometers, motors, buzzer, beak LED, and a pen mount for drawing capability. And it plugs into a USB port. No batteries required. And this why this is a hot swappable device, and this is why we need to configure Ubuntu to allow it to run. So the outcome for this video is to create a user, a new user, and assign this user hot swappable device permissions using standard the standard plug dev group. Plug dev group is a group already written into Ubuntu, and it's for items such as hot swappable device. We connect a hot swappable device and gather the information. In this case, the information will be from a Finch robot. And we'll use this information to create a UDEV rule for the hot swappable device and save the rule to a file. And once we've got everything configured there, we'll have the user run a hot swap device such as the Finch robot. And in order to do that, you've got to install the software and, of course, plug it in and then just simply run the program. Requirements for this video are Java, Eclipse, and a Finch robot. And additional info, you've got plug dev know-how. Ubuntu plug dev info, Finch robot, you've seen that site, and the directions for Finch USB hookup, where they'll give you step-by-step -step directions similar to what you'll see in this video. In order to use a hot swappable USB device such as the Finch robot, two things have to occur. First, the user has to be part of the plug dev group, and second, the Finch robot has to be tied in with the plug dev group. The Plug Dev Group is a group designed to allow non-root users work with hot pluggable devices or hot swappable devices such as the Finch robot. In this section of the video, let's take a look at step one, having the user be part of this Plug Dev Group. To check a set of groups that come with Ubuntu, let's open up a terminal. Let's open up a terminal window. And let's do more on this file etc group and what more does it allows you to look at all everything in the file uh, one uh, screen at a time and you just hit space so there's nothing there and now here in this we see that we have the plug dev group and the user mic is assigned to it and it's got this number 4546 or this ID for it. So this user is assigned to the plug dev group, but we're going to make sure we're going to create other, another user and assign them to the plug dev group. So someone who's not an, a non root user can use plug dev. So let's go ahead and close this. We'll close the terminal and we'll go to the software center. I'd rather than do everything in uh, from the terminal, we're going to look for a file called GNOME System Utilities. G N O M E dash system. I'm sorry, not utilities, but tools. And right here it is GNOME System Tools. Open it and install it. Of course, you have to authenticate the installation. Once you see the remove, it's installed. So we can close this and go to dash home and type in user. Got two items here, user accounts and users and group. And users and groups is, is what it's labeled as a menu item. 
and we can click on it. And if we want to leave it on here, we can lock it to the launcher. Uh, or that. So anyway, let's add a user. Click on Add. Ask for authentication, and we're going to call this user one you can add anything you want you wish to uh you know you can name it anything you want uh it gives you the rules right here for uh adding users click ok give the user a password we'll click ok password confirmation I guess I've made an error in typing in the password. Let's try that. And so let's go, once the user's been added, we'll go to Manage Groups. And let's scroll down. And in this case, well, you notice that the group wasn't in uh, alphabetical order, but this is. So we'll go to Plug Dev. And click on properties. In this case, we're going to add user one. Click right here for user one and click OK and close. And if you want to, you can also go to advanced setting. We'll go to advanced, um, sorry, we'll go to user privileges. We've got some other things we can have the user be able to do. We can use video devices, modems, scanners, uh, whatever you wish, CD ROM floppy drives, whatever you wish your standard users to use, you know, configure printers if you want, connect to internet using a modem, whatever, connect to wireless, an ethernet. These are all uh, user privileges right here in the advanced section that automatically come in. And so we'll click OK here, and we'll click Close. This finishes the first requirement of having a user be part of the plug dev group. The next section we're going to configure the Finch robot to be part of the plug dev group. In this section, we configure the Finch robot to be part of the plug dev group. In order to do this, we have to write a file called a udev file and save it to Ubuntu. A udev file allows Ubuntu to dynamically handle devices in the dev directory and all user, user permissions associated with that device. Plug or unplug a device into a USB port the UDEV file handles all the work associated with getting the device to run. In order to get started, let's plug in our hot swappable device, the Finch robot. In this case, I'm using a virtual machine uh, that's running inside a virtual box. Uh, you may have another virtual machine or even a... What I have to do here to get this running is uh, go to USB devices and actually click on BirdBrain's Finch tool. See that it recognizes that. You may not have to do this if you're not running a virtual machine. So let's open up a terminal. And you can type in terminal or select it here. And let's see what uh, Ubuntu makes of this uh, plug. Do that is pull the log file, the message, and we're just going to pipe that in and then tail the end of the log file. Here we have uh, the uh, Bird Brains Tools Finch, and we've got some numbers 00032354002. Now, in order to get some uh, little more information on this, we can do an LS USB, which is like an LS, but for the USB port, hit enter. In this case, we'll notice that we got the 2354 that we have up here. And it, the 1111, and we'll notice here we got the bus 2 and the device 003. So that matches these numbers up there. So now we have enough information to write the UDEV uh, file. So I'm going to open up another terminal, just simply keep this terminal uh, open. Go to Terminal, right click, and New Terminal, and move it over here. We're going to use get it, the default editor. Uh, well, actually, we have to, since we're going to be saving this file, we have to use a uh, sudo get it.
put in for a comment. So this is the Finch robot file. Uh, and you probably have to do something similar to this for all hot swappable devices. Start off with subsystem. And it is case sensitive. Sorry, I shouldn't have put in a uh, quote at the beginning. Equal, equal. And these are two equal signs here because it's a comparison operator. It's looking for USB. Subsystem, equal, equal, USB, comma, afterwards, attribute, curly Q braces, ID, vendor, equal, equal again. And in this case, we'll go to 2354. And this is where we're getting this from right here. Close. And another attribute ID product. Curly Q again. Equal, equal, 1111. Come again, now we've got this mode equal. Now, in this case, it's only one equal because we're setting. And we're going to give it the minimum permissions we need. 0660, comma, for what group equal plug dev. Whoops, spell this correctly. Let's make sure I've got everything correct. Subsystem USB attribute ID vendor. Uh, this should be ID product. I wish I was a better typist. 111 mode equal 066 a group equal plug dev. Looks okay, so I'm going to save it. And we'll go to file system. We're going to save it in etc. etc. And we're looking for a UDEV directory. And we see this rules D. And we see a number of files here. So what we're going to call this is 55-finch.rules. Because we're using a Finch robot or a Finch robot, whatever name. But we use a number below 60. Because below 60 are user rules. So if there's already a 55 rule because they come in order, uh, there is a, a, a system for these numbers. Use 54, use 56, uh, use 50 or something like that. We'll click save. It says a file name. So we're going to cancel because it doesn't seem to think I'm highlighted here. I should be highlighted up here. etc. You dev. Rules D. And we'll click save. Now, one other thing that you have check is ls slash l we've got a bus 002 so you've got device bus usb and the bus number is 002 we'll pull that up here device is 003 and you'll notice that we got a root root now we can start restart dev, uh, so using sudo service uh, udev restart, but a lot of times it doesn't work. So we're going to reboot this because what this second root should be, once that uh, udev rule that we've just written is applied, it should say plug dev here because this, this stands for the group. So we're going to say sudo reboot. Log back in, go to a terminal window,
you should have, we'll do an ls usb here. We'll do an ls slash l, and then we'll go to device bus usb, and the bus is 002, and devices, I'm uh, usb devices 003, 003. And you'll notice now it says plug depth. And so now this is a hot swappable device. So the Finch robot is ready for any user to use that's part of the plug dev group. And next section, we'll install the software and actually get the robot to work. Now that the hot swappable uh, plug plug in device, the uh, in this case, the Finch robot is configured. Uh, let's sign in as a different user and let's see how it works. So we'll sign in as a different user. This is user one. And of course, uh, we need to plug in our uh, Finch robot. Since this is a uh, virtual machine, I want to make sure that it's checked here on BirdBrain Tools. So everything should work. Uh, we just need to download the uh, Finch robot software. And in order to do that, open up Firefox web browser and go to finchrobot.com. Do a search for Finch Robot. Go to the site. And here we'll go to Software Downloads. And here we'll go to Eclipse and Linux Download. And we're going to save the file. Click OK. And we'll close this once it's downloaded. Let's go to our home folder. In this case, the file was loaded to the downloads directory, so we'll open that. And we'll simply right click on this, click on extract here. Files are extracted, it's Finch software folder. We'll move it to our home directory so we can use it there and keep our downloads directory simply for downloads. Go ahead and close both of these. We'll start Eclipse. In this case, I should, probably should have locked it to, to the directory. So I'll, I'll lock it to the launcher, I mean. And it asks for workspace. Now we'll use, just go ahead and we'll use the default workspace here. And click OK. And we're going to go to a file, new project. And since Finch Robot runs in Java, we'll give it a Java project. Click Next. Now, one thing we need to change is default location. And we're going to browse to the home directory. Finch software and source files. Once we highlight source files, we click OK so that it should be here. Click on Next. And two things that we need to, we need to add some external jars from source files, Finch jar, generator jar, if you use the shift key, you can select both at the same time and click OK. Then simply click Finish. And it says this kind of project is associated with the Java perspective. We'll click Yes. And here we've got our project source files. And we're going to just select one program here, run. Code simple output, and we're going to select dance.java. Double click on it, let's open it up. And right here it is, and highlight it. It says time to do a little dance. Um, and then it's going to go around and move a little bit. So in this case, we'll click on run. 
And time to do a little you, dance. You'll notice that here it comes out some errors. Just simply ignore these errors because the the first uh, live civil refers to a webcam that uh, somehow it doesn't seem to be working in Linux, and the other one refers to a 64-bit file that is shouldn't even be called because we're running 32-bit Linux. So it's actually so it's actually running. Um, one of the things that it does ask that you do uh, in the configurations and, and right here on the arguments, VM arguments, and this is straight from their site, but we've got it running without doing this, is that you add the following code, dash d java dot li library dot path, whoops, library, I hit the cap locks, three, dot, path, equal, dot, and don't forget the uh, leading dash or the trailing dot. We can click run again. Time to do a little dance. And it runs again. Now, if you don't want to see these uh, error pages, let's just open up two instances of the home folder. Open up another instance. Move this over here. Skip. We'll move this out of the way. And we'll right click and open a new window. Go to Finch Software. Source Files. And here we have these files that are giving us problems. Here we also have the Finch Jar and if generator jar that we need. So we'll go over here in Finch software and we'll make a new directory and create a new folder and we'll just say it problem files and then we're going to move this one into there and this one into there. All we can do we can close both directories now. And now when we run it, we won't see the error message. Time to do a little dance. And so now it runs without doing the error message. And so now this is how you uh, get your Finch robot or basically any hot swappable device working. Thank you.